Okay, now it's time to start using our information on the periodic table. For instance, writing chemical formulas. Now, this is very important because in chemistry, we don't want to always write out words. And um, I know a lot of the symbols already, so I won't have to look them up, but we'll do it together anyways. So let's say I've got a compound called calcium chloride. I look at this and I go, I know calcium is an element, but what about this chloride? Yeah, I see that there's an IDE here instead. This really is the element chlorine. But we drop that little NE off there and add IDE instead. So this, instead of saying calcium chlorine, we say calcium chloride. Now I can look up the elements on the periodic table. I already know them already, but we can look them up. I'll show you in a moment. So if I want to translate this into the chemical symbols, I know calcium is capital C, small a. I know chlorine is capital C, small l. And we want to you know, write the correct formula here. So the first thing you need to do is convert these words into their symbols. And we look on the periodic table, you know, here's the calcium I was talking about, and uh, here is the chlorine I was talking about earlier. But we can go quickly and remind ourselves that th this group's the plus one, this group's the positive two, these all have variable charges and do need Roman numerals. Then we have a plus three, a plus or a minus four, a minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. Well, I see that calcium located in the alkaline earth metals is positive two, and the chlorine over here in the halogens is minus one. So I go back here, and then I put my charges. I put a plus two here and a minus one here. Now, how do I end up writing the formula then? Well, to do this, we will, I call it crisscross charges. Whatever charge is on the, the metal, I'm just going to write down here. So I put a 2 here. And please notice I'm not going to put the plus or minus. I'm just going to put that number 2 there. And then I've got a 1 here, and then I would write a 1 down here. Now, we actually do not write 1s, so I'm going to leave that 1 off. Now, if you do write the 1, it's not wrong. It's just not necessary. So... Calcium chloride's formula is CaCl2. Okay, let's try the next one. Uh, so sodium phosphide. Now remember, this really is sodium and uh, phosphor us added together. Notice how we drop the last part of the element and we add IDE. So this is the element phosphor us, but we call it phosphide. Well, I know sodium is Na and phosphor us is P. Again, you'll need to practice this. You'll actually have to go to the periodic table yourselves and uh, take a look at this. So I'm talking sodium is right here. On your periodic table, you could find it. And again, it might take you a while. And this is for us. Okay, letter P. I look at sodium, I see a plus one. I go over here for uh, phosphorus and I see a minus three. Okay, so let's go back. I'm going to put sodium as positive one and phosphorus as a minus three. Now, once again, I'll crisscross charges. I'll bring just the number one down here, but I don't write ones. And then I'll bring the three down here and make it this. Please notice I'm not bringing a negative or a plus with me. I'm just bringing the number down. I'm crisscrossing. Whatever number is here goes there. Whatever number is here goes there. So the correct formula for sodium phosphide is Na3P. Okay, next one, manganese 4 oxide. Oh, I see a Roman numeral here. Well, I know the symbol for manganese is MN. And again, you'll have to find it on the periodic table. I know the symbol for oxide, which really means oxygen. Remember, we dropped the last part off. And then that is O, so I do know that. Now, manganese is probably a transition metal. I see a, a Roman numeral IV there, so I know that that's plus 4. Okay, and now let's look at oxygen. Oxygen is the element O. Let's find manganese. It's actually right here. And notice how that is indeed in the transition metal area. So we need to put a Roman numeral on that to figure out what the charge is. And then oxygen is a minus 2. Okay, so let's go back. I'm going to put a minus 2 here. Okay, so I'm going to bring then the 4 here. And then the two here. So I have Mn2O4. But I look at this. This is special. 
I notice that each of these can be divided by 2 and simplified. Some formulas you have to do that. So I can divide this by 2 and this by 2, and I end up with mn O2. And that is the real correct formula. So some need to be simplified if they both turn out even. That's an even number and that's an even number. We must simplify it. Very similar in math when you have to simplify fractions. All right, let's continue with the others. Uh, lead to oxide. Well, I know lead is PB. I've got a Roman numeral 2 on there, so automatically I can put a plus 2 there. And then I see oxide. Well, oxide, I know, is a, a minus 2 already from here. Let's go to the periodic table and just verify. So lead is PB, and again, you'll have to find these. Lead, it's in the plus or minus 4 category, and there are a lot of exceptions in that group. So the Roman numeral tells me do not choose this particular characteristic. Choose the positive 2. And oxygen, of course, being minus 2. So when we bring these down, I'll put the charge here and the charge here like this. So the 2 goes there, that 2 goes there. And one more time, notice how I don't bring pluses or minuses. And I see both of these, of course, can be simplified to PBO. They're both divisible by 2. And actually, they are the number 2. <laughs> All right, we have two more examples. Lithium and sulfide. I know the symbol for lithium is Li. And remember, this is sulfur, not sulfide. When we go back to find the element, that is. So I put the letter S there. And again, you got to go to your periodic table and find that. Lithium is this element here, Li. And it is in the plus 1 column. And sulfur is in the minus 2 column. Okay, so I've got a plus 1 and a minus 2. Go back to there. I put a plus 1 here and a minus 2 here. I will crisscross my charges again. Whatever number is here, I just bring down here. Whatever number is here, I bring here. But again, we don't write ones. So that correct formula is Li2S. That is lithium sulfide. And last but not least, potassium iodine. I know potassium is K. I know iodine is I. Okay. I go back to my periodic table. Take a look. I've got potassium here is plus 1. I know I've got iodine of minus 1. I can write those charges on there, plus 1 and minus 1. When I crisscross both of those, I don't write any of those sound because I don't write 1s. So this would be a 1 and a 1. So the correct formula is already Ki for potassium iodine. And that's how we use our periodic table to write chemical formulas.